Hi, and welcome to part three of the weekly kayaking tips. No mountains here asked. So where to store the paddle float and bilge pump? On the deck that's not really appeal to me, gets in the way, can be lost. Any alternatives? I agree completely. Uh, it's good to keep your decks both uh, fore and aft clear of things because if you're doing any kind of rescues, you have people on it, if you yourself on it doing a self-rescue, it's good to be completely clear of anything that's going to get in the way. Uh, I usually keep both of those things, the bilge pump and the paddle float, behind my seat, uh, behind the back band. If your bilge pump is too big to go sideways behind your seat, uh, you could find a way to attach it to the underside of your deck. Uh, it, they sell clips that you can glue onto the underside of the deck. You could also find um, stand-up paddle boards. They sometimes have kits that come with sticky anchors and um, bungee cords. And you could put that on the underside of your deck. Uh, one, uh, there's also bags for the underside of the deck that can attach there and you're able to put your bilge pump and the paddle float if needed. In there as well. I've seen some people that have ashtrays on the top of their deck, therefore no space. They've actually placed their bilge pump on the floor of the kayak uh, with uh, things that hold it in place. I didn't really like that location because I feel if I'm doing a self-rescue it'd be very easy to kick it when you are getting into the boat without looking where your feet are going. Uh, but so behind the backrest or just you could find a way to attach it under the deck uh, so that it's out of the way. Relden asks, the Ala box seems like a perfect kayak but only round hatches. Can you live without an oval hatch? And what do you dislike about the Ala? The Ala has been awesome for me, excellent for rough water. Um, I don't really miss the oval hatch. Uh, I used to have one in my old boat and the 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 round ones are a little easier to put on. Uh, all I do is all of my camping gear is all pretty small and I use small volume um, dry bags to pack anyway. So uh, 10 liters go in there perfectly and anything bigger I just make sure to get it in first and then uh, bunch it down and get it in there. Uh, just all my equipment seems to fit through it. Even, uh, even the drone has fit exactly through that 10 inch round hatch. Uh, I haven't had a problem with that. If I got to change something about the ALA, I would add a deck mounted compass recess so that I could have one installed there all the time. Um, the ALA is supposed to be for playing in rough water and shorter trips and uh, I know that usually you might not use uh, a compass but I really like having a compass on most trips and uh, I use one of those that you can tie to the bungees and I just think my, my my deck would be cleaner if I had one that was mounted there all the time. It would also mean one less piece of equipment that I need to worry about on every trip. But it's not a big deal. I attach it and detach it on every trip. Artist G asked, I need to replace my deck bungees. Do you have a favorite online source? Uh, I don't have a favorite one. Uh, I recently purchased a quarter inch shock cord right from Amazon for my skin on frame boat and so far it's been holding up just fine. Uh, I'm sure that if you get them from a kayaking supplier you would probably get cooler colors or you could get bungees that have um, reflective thread interwoven or just cooler looking stuff that might hold up better to seawater but uh, the one that I got from Amazon that was pretty cheap I think it was six bucks for 20 feet uh, maybe 30 feet it's, it's been holding up just fine. Matt GN1 asked, I've been kayaking pretty much my whole life, but I'm just getting into photography. The only thing I have a problem with is taking sharp pictures when there are any sizable waves, any hits. Absolutely. What I found works best in waves is you don't want to be sitting there trying to take pictures and hoping you get a good one. So what I like doing is I like shooting video at the highest possible resolution, highest possible settings, and then I go back and I look through the footage and I try to find still frames that I think look cool. Uh, I think that way you just let the camera roll, you have fun, you don't worry about it, and hopefully you can go back and find some good stuff afterwards. I hope that's helpful. Savka Gills asked, how did you come up with the name and name and logo for Kaya Hipster? Also, do you have any Kaya Hipster stickers left? Yep, I have a ton of stickers. I'll hook you up for sure. Uh, for the name, so I wanted some kind of name and um, my friends always make fun of me because I wear pretty skinny jeans and v-necks and I have usually glasses on so they 
make fun of me for being a hipster for the way I dress and I thought that be pretty funny if there was a kayaking hipster because I guess you think of hipsters riding old bicycles with the big wheel in front and a lot of us are building old kayaks that are traditional skin on frames and I thought it worked, I thought it'd be funny, I'm making fun of myself at the same time and it might be memorable. And then for the logo, if you look at the little guy's head, there is a little um, kayak with a person kayaking past some mountains that I hid into his hat and uh, I thought that was a fun way to include kayaking and the glasses and the beard. So it worked. I'm happy with it. Uh, and yeah, I'll, I'll send you some um, some stickers for sure. Aaron Fleshman mentions, and this is a really good topic. Uh, I know he knows the answer, and he just he's giving me something to talk about, and it's it's a really good point. Uh, some kayak experts always talk poorly about box store recreational kayaks and say they are limiting. What am I missing out on? It floats, and I can paddle it just fun, just fine. Here's the thing: they are cheap, and they're cheap for a reason, and their use is for you to test to see if you want to get into kayaking. It gets you out on the water quickly. The problem is when you're at those box stores, they don't tell you how limiting they are. You can only use those in uh, very calm lakes in slow moving water. They are very stable for that reason so that uh, beginners and people that are just enjoying themselves and just want to go out on the lake and, and fish or, or, or just spend the day out on the water can do so comfortably, safely, uh, but they are not meant for fast moving water, they are not meant for ocean paddling, they're not meant for so many things. They don't have all the safety features or features that make kayaks able to handle different types of water. Another way in which uh, cheap recreational kayaks might be limiting is they might limit your learning. And what I mean by that is they often will have very uncomfortable seats. They're just molded right into, into the body of the kayak. So you might not know that by padding it out, it could be more comfortable or that other seats by other brands, uh, more expensive brands are a lot more comfortable. And so if you are having pain in your back or you're getting stiff after half an hour, hour, two hours on the water, you might eventually give up on paddling because you think, oh, this isn't for me. When it turns out that by just paddling a better boat, you might be able to paddle all day long and not notice. Uh, another thing is some of them might not even come with foot pegs. Um, the materials, the better brands will be made of very, very strong plastic that are virtually indestructible, where the cheaper ones can easily get dinged or scratched or hurt if you bottom out on some rocks or if you drag them over uh, the shore when you're launching. In summary, I don't think there's anything wrong with the cheaper recreational kayaks. I think they serve a purpose and they might be perfect for what you want to do for the entire lifespan of the boat. Uh, what I really do wish would happen is for box stores to advise people on what the limitations of the boats are rather than just try to sell their products where if you go to a real kayak retailer a real kayak shop or you talk to any paddling club they will take their time to make sure that the kayak you get is the one for you and they will also tell you where you can and can't use it uh, i think that's where a lot of the problem really lies but once again I think a good kayak is one that gets you out on the water, just as long as it does it safely. So that's it for this week. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, please subscribe if you want to. I will keep doing these as often as I can. Just ask a question on the Instagram account and then I will try to answer to the best of my abilities here. Uh, if you want to follow up on any of the questions, just comment below or drop me a line anytime. See you next time.